already read the Infernal Devices trilogy and Chain of Gold, you want to jump right into Chain of Iron, but you can't remember what quite happened in all those other books that came before. I'ma catch you up. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Tessa who loved to read. Except she wasn't just a girl. She had a weird ability to change into other people if she'd been given an object that belonged to them. But she was not aware of this. After her parents and aunt died, she was summoned to London to live with her brother and upon arrival was immediately kidnapped and forced to train to use her change gift. not a good time. Luckily, eventually, duck-fearing, book-loving Will Herondale shows up. Will's all, oh my god, Tesla's so smart and vaguely sassy and beautiful. And his pair of Bozzy Jim Carstairs is all, oh my god, Tesla's so smart and sweet and beautiful. And thus begins the greatest love triangle of all time. not keep watching this if you haven't read The Infernal Devices. The Infernal Devices is the greatest trilogy of all time and you are a fool to stay and spoil yourself. A fool! Go read it. Go. This is just a refresher. How dare you stay? Tessa would be ashamed of you. Go. And thus begun the greatest love triangle of all time. Why does Will act like he's obsessed with Tessa but then act like a total ass face whenever they kiss? What secret is Jem hiding, and why is he the nicest, sweetest human you ever did see that plays an amazing violin? And does Tessa like him too? Does he like Tessa? And we're all like, what's up with Tessa? Who is she? Where are these powers from? Who are her parents? Is she a downworlder? <gasps> right as Will is running to confess his feelings to Tessa, Jem proposes to and her. Tessa loves Jem, but Tessa also really loves Will a lot. But she says yes to Jem, and Jem is dying. There's a lot of other stuff that's not necessarily important to know for Chain of Iron, you'll have to read it. Stop being here if you haven't read it. This is just a recap. It's the greatest trilogy of all time. Turns out Tessa's father was an Edelon demon and her mother was a shadow hunter? The big bad Mortmain slash the Magister's adoptive warlock parents were murdered by shadow hunters and this set him on a vendetta to destroy the shadow hunter rise completely. Mortmain stole Aloysia Starkweather's newborn shadow hunter grandchild <gasps> and switched her out with a mundane. And that shadow hunter child that grew up in the mundane world was Elizabeth Tessa's mother. Once Elizabeth was grown and married, Mortmain sent an Edelon demon to impersonate her husband and bed her and thus created Tessa, a warlock shadow hunter hybrid child that Mortman eventually planned to win. Gag. Let me introduce you to this guy, Benedict Lightwood, patriarch of the well-known Shadowhunter family, the Lightwoods. We know three of his children, Gideon Lightwood, Gabriel Lightwood, and Tatiana Lightwood. Benedict is working with Mortmain because Benedict has an STD called Demon Pox, a deadly disease from having sexual intercourse with demons. In exchange for his loyalty, the Magister is providing Benedict a special medicine to slow its progress. But when he falls out of the Magister's good graces, he turns into a giant demon worm. <laughs> Benedict the demon worm ends up eating his pregnant daughter's husband. Oh. But have no fear, Will Gem, Gideon Gabriel, and Cecily are here to save the day. Behold, they murder him and save Tatiana and her unborn child. Whee! In the end, Jem becomes a silent brother, and Tessa and Will are together. The crew defeat the Magister and his clockwork army with the help of Tessa and her clockwork angel. To 1903, and Will and Tessa have teenage children. Their firstborn, the angst filled, book loving, demon hunting James Herondale. James can kind of teleport himself by traveling through a shadow realm. Right now, it gives him anxiety because he can't figure out exactly how it works, but like it's gonna be super cool if he masters it. And their second born is Lucy Herondale. Lucy has the ability to basically use dead people as her servants. She also loves bread pudding and writing, and corresponds regularly with her best friend and soon to be a parabati, Cordelia Carstairs. Cordelia just moved from London with her mom and brother. Her father, Elias, has been arrested for mishandling a demon situation. Cordelia is certain that he's not guilty and she's determined to clear his name. She doesn't find out till later in the book, but her dad's actually an alcoholic and it's caused many of the problems that he's been dealing with throughout the years and is also most likely the reason he's in trouble now. So Cordelia's had a crush on James Herndall forever and James likes Cordelia but he's under a dark magic love spell because <laughs> Grace Blackthorn cursed him with her. Right now he thinks he's in love with Grace. There's this ball and Cordelia and James are dancing but then Grace shows up and James is just like 
by and drops Cordelia's hand like a zombie and walks away mid-dance. And for a second, we're all like, James, how dare you, you douche face. But then we learn about Grace's evil love siren spell and we forgive him. Grace enchanted James with an evil love spell anchored by this weird silver bracelet. But halfway through the novel, she took it off and when she did, he was all, mm, I don't even like her. Grace Blackthorn is a mysterious case. Remember Tatiana, the daughter of evil Benedict Lightwood? Yeah, Tatiana is Grace's mom. Remember how Tatiana's dad, a giant demon worm, ate her husband and her brothers Gabriel and Gideon and Gem and Will and Cecily came to save the day and kill the giant worm dad? Tatiana sees the situation a little differently. Somehow her husband and father dying is Will, Gem, and her brothers fall and now she hates them with a burning passion and refuses to wear anything other than the dress she was wearing two decades ago when worm dad attacked. She completely caught everyone out of her life and decided to live in isolation with her son Jesse Blackthorne and her ward Grace. When Jesse Blackthorne got his first marks, his body couldn't handle them, and then he got really sick and was dying, and Tatiana was desperate to keep him alive, so she approached any warlock who would teach her dark magic and ended up saving Jesse's last breath using necromancy magic in a locket. <laughs> which solidified his presence as a weird physical ghost that only Grace and Tatiana could see. And now they cart his body around in a coffin everywhere they go, hoping to find a way to use his last breath to bring him back to life. Tatiana eventually goes ahead and makes a deal with a prince of hell that she'll deliver him James Herondale in exchange for the murder of the Shadowhunter family she hates and helping bring her son Jesse Blackthorne back to life. Jesse Blackthorne has been trapped as a 17 year old ghost who could only speak to his mom and sister for the last seven years. Then he meets Lucy Herondale. Boy, do they bond. And if you've studied the might be misleading family tree from the Clockwork Princess jacket like I have, you know there's a chance that Lucy has kids with this dead boy and produces the Blackthorn line. We'll see. Let's talk about Matthew. Matthew Fairchild is James Arendelle's parabachi. The kid's a sweetheart, but he's also dealing with some deep-rooted issues. He has a very obvious crush on Lucy, but she's totally not interested. And he's starting to develop a crush on Cordelia, which is very not ideal. It's not ideal for us right now. In case you forgot or didn't read The Ghost of the Shadow Market, when Matthew was younger, he accidentally poisoned his mother and his unborn sibling. Charlotte survived, but the baby unfortunately did not. He considers himself a murderer, and he's drinking himself to death over it. We're all very worried. Alongside all the social drama, a giant poisonous magical demon has been let loose on the city and surprise it can come out during the day. Our teenage crew has the bright idea to capture the giant magical in a Pisces. But they don't have a Pisces, so they have to steal one at a scandalous downworlder club. To distract the crowd while Anna Lightwood steals it, Cordelia does a sexy storytelling dance. Later in the night, James and Cordelia end up hiding together in a private room, and when someone walks in on them, so they don't look suspicious, don't look suspicious, they start making out! James is all like, Daisy, my Daisy, Daisy, my Daisy. Is that probably with an English accent because they're from London? Daisy, my Daisy. It works and the intruder leaves them alone. But they just keep going at it because surprise, they're actually in love. Let's get back to Tatiana. So that Prince of Hell that Tatiana made a deal with is Belial, Thief of Realms. He wants to be able to walk on Earth, but alas, it's the one thing he cannot do without appearing as an illusion or possessing someone. And when he possesses someone, their body falls apart in a matter of hours. Poor, evil, all-powerful, immortal fallen angel man. The only way he could truly possess someone and walk the earth is if his blood runs in their veins. And hold on to your hats, folks. Remember that Edelon demon that seduced Tessa's mother? Turns out it was actually Belial. Mr. Belial planned on getting Elizabeth pregnant and using his child as a vessel to live on earth. His plan was foiled because Tessa was wearing a clockwork angel that protected her from being possessed. But alas, now two more spawn exist. Mr. James and Miss Lucy. See Herondale. Everything is coming back to James. He needs to confront his Prince of Hell grandpa. And so when he sees a portal to the Shadow Realm outside the City of Bones, he leaps through it. Matthew is there too, but when he tries to come, he just bounces off the barrier. In the Shadow Realm, Belial's on. Let me possess you. And James is like, mm. no. So Belial unleashes the Manticore. <laughs> Meanwhile, Cordelia rushes to James's aid. She gets to the sealed portal and she cuts through it with Cortana. James gets poisoned by the Manticore, but still manages to kill it. Cordelia summons Cortana and plunges it into Belial's chest.
Back at the Institute, Lucy has this flash that James is in danger and she asks Jesse to teleport her to Silent City where the portal is. Cordelia and James fall from the sky and back into the cemetery. James is dying from the excessive amount of manticore poison, but in an act of selfless love, Jesse removes the locket with his last breath and gives it to Lucy so she can give it to James to save him. As soon as Lucy uses it on James, Jesse fades away. James is on the mend. It feels like everything is coming together. James is going to tell Cordelia about his feelings for her. Cordelia thinks that James might have feelings for her. Things are looking up. Then Grace comes to visit James while he's recovering in the Institute and decides to put that evil bitch bracelet back on his wrist. And suddenly, all the loving thoughts of Cordelia evaporate. She tricks James into going to Blackthorn Manor where all the proof of their necromancy dark magic is sitting to destroy an automaton. As soon as he destroys the automaton, it catches fire. And what do you know, Tatiana's entire house and all the proof of her evil plans are destroyed. There's a clave meeting, and Tatiana accuses James Herondale of burning down her f***ing house. But just when we think she's got him, Cordelia comes to the rescue, sacrificing the most important thing a woman has in society, her reputation. <gasps> James couldn't have done it. James was with me in my room last night, all night. <gasps> James cannot comprehend what Cordelia just did for him. After the meeting, he finds her and proposes, which would be grand, but he thinks he's in love with Grace again, so he proposes a fake marriage for a year to save her honor and promises her after that that they will divorce. Tatiana is stripped of her marks and is sentenced to Iron Sisterhood at the Citadel, but turns out being sent to the Citadel is all part of Belial's evil plan to destroy Shadowhunters from the inside out. Grace continues to lead James on at his engagement party to Cordelia. Lucy is planning to help Grace raise Jesse from the dead. Cordelia loves James, who's under a love spell from Grace. Grace is now engaged to aspiring politician Charles Fairchild, who was in a relationship with Alistair, Cordelia's brother, but was really shit to him. Alistair and Thomas have been making eyes at each other, but Thomas found out that Alistair started a rumor that his father was having an affair with Matthew's mom back in school, and that rumor did a lot of damage, so now Thomas is pissed. Matthew liked Lucy, but Lucy didn't like him, and now he has a growing crush on Cordelia. Before Charles was engaged to Grace, he was engaged to Ariadne, who Anna is in love with, and we thought Ariadne loved Anna, but she wanted kids, so she agreed to an engagement with Charles, but then Charles broke it off when Ariadne was in a coma. Douche. Cordelia's dad was released from jail, so he's headed back to London to live with them. Jesse Blackthorn is dead, but not completely because of dark magic. Cordelia and James are about to be married in what they're calling a fake wedding, but in actuality, they both love each other. And Magnus is gonna be in London because he wants to say and see how all this drama unravels. And that's what you missed on Chain of Gold. Of course, you missed a lot of other stuff too. And if you want more details, I have an in-depth book talk. You can also watch to get back up to speed. It's gonna remind you of a lot of other things. That link is in the description. Chain of Iron comes out March 2nd, 2021. The link to get it is in the description as well. My name's Christine. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.